Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Capes and Tights, a comic book and pop culture podcast. Today, we welcome comics writer, critic, journalist, and teacher Douglas Woke to the program. Woke is a author of all of the Marvels, a journey to the ends of the biggest story ever told. He is also the author of Reading Comics and amongst other other books. He is an Eisner Award-winning author for writing about comics. Even Brian K. Vaughn, author of Saga and Why the Last Man Says, What Sounds Like a Madman's Quest Turns Out to Deeply Emotional Hero's Journey. The best work yet from the best writer about the medium of comics, Douglas Woke. So today we talked his book, All of the Marvels amongst other things about comic books and the comic book world. So follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Capes and Tights Podcast, on Twitter at Capes Tights Pod, and visit capesandtights.com as well as subscribe, rate, and review all those things on Apple, Spotify, and all your podcasting platforms. Thanks for listening, and thanks for tuning in to our interview and our talk with Douglas Woke, author of all of the Marvels. Enjoy, everybody. Welcome to the podcast, Douglas. How are you? Good. Glad to uh, be here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I just finished your book, All of the Marvels. Uh, I got the oh. hardcover here too, but I also, uh, I was also a, a digital buyer because I also listened to it on audiobook because I like to listen to it oh, on the way to, to the office and back. So, uh, and uh, nice. did you read the audiobook? I'm trying to remember whether or not that was true or not. Were I did. You... Yeah, that, that, that was me. Yeah. See, it's not fun to get to read your own book over again. Everybody listen to your beautiful voice, right? It was a really interesting experience, actually, uh, getting to <laughs> record it. Uh, and it was a lot of fun, but there was a lot of, like, narrow in on the delivery. Like, make sure you haven't gotten to the point where your voice is so burned out that you're stuttering all the time. <laughs> did you, as you were reading it out loud again, did you go, oh, I would have done, done something differently, the writing of the book, too? Or was it just basically just read it and, and read your lines? It was basically just reading it. I mean, I had been over the book a lot before it came yes. out there. Like, I think I said I was reading it, there were a couple typos I noticed, but uh, really, I'm, I wrote this book twice. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first time I wrote it, I wrote it through, I finished it, I was not happy with it. And then I realized that it was just, I just had, I had to start over. Like I threw out 85, 90% of what was there and went back and wrote it again in a different way. Uh, that's so awesome it, it's it, just it, it's it's interesting i like to listen to audiobooks and it is one of those weird things that when you read a book you obviously hear your own voice in your head as you're reading it uh when you read an audiobook it remi reminds me there's, a, there's an episode of seinfeld when george wants to read a book for his work when he's working for the yankees uh like a, a book about learning about something and he wants the audiobook version of it and the guy on the audiobook sounds just like george's voice and he gets all upset because he's like, I can't listen to myself, read the book to myself. This is too weird. <laughs> you know, I have to download like the sample on Audible to make sure that I can actually listen to the person's voice before I sit and, you know, commit to like 10, 11 hours of someone's book. Uh, and so luckily your voice was soothing enough for me to listen to an audio book. So I appreciate that. Um, but let's back up a little bit. How, so as a kid or a younger person, how did you get into comics in the first place? Like I reading comic books. Oh man. I mean, you know, the, the, uh, the origin story is, you know, nine years old, upstate New York, visiting my grandparents, uh, went to a drugstore, bought a green lantern, green arrow, really liked it. Wanted to find out what happened next. Said when the next issue was going to be on sale. I was uh, back home in Michigan by that point, so I went to a bookstore and bought that. And oh, there's another, there's an issue with the Flash and the Green Lanterns in that. Oh, and uh, there's this other thing that looks interesting too. And before I knew it, I was you know a hopeless junkie going back and buying comics every week. And then I discovered there was a store down the street that sold nothing but comics, and I could go every Friday. And uh, after a couple of years of that, they're like, okay, Douglas, we're just going to teach you to use the register. Um, <laughs> And it was it was really all downhill from there. 
That's, that's awesome. It's, it's one of those weird things that I got into comic books as a younger person, but mainly only when my dad bought them for me when I was like sick. Like I had an upset uh-huh. stomach or stayed home from school. He'd right. bring home ginger ale and a comic book uh, where it wasn't until my teens and, and early 20s before I actually got into actually like going to the store and purchasing it myself. Uh, so we'll get to it. I want to talk a little bit about the end of the book towards the end of the book, because I, I just had a, I had a child eight months ago. And so oh, the, wow. the, whole, the discovery, this discussion about you and talking to your son uh, about reading and stuff like that, that I want to talk about a little bit, but uh, so you, you love comic books and you get into it, but how do you go about writing about comic books? What, what led to actually not writing comic books, but writing about, about comic writing books. about comic books. That was more or less by accident. That was in the early 90s. I was working as the managing editor of a music magazine and CMJ New Music Monthly no longer exists. No. Uh, but uh, we had a whole bunch of pages to fill and we had no budget. And at one point we decided, okay, we're going to have a couple pages devoted to other media. I'm like, okay, great. I, you know, I read comics all the time. I'll write a comics review. And I think the first thing I wrote about was Grant Morrison's Doom Patrol while it was coming out. And someone at DC saw that and really liked it and put me on their comp list, which was great. (laughs) Uh, And then I did a little more. I was writing about comics for the Village Voice, too. And then I got invited to write about comics for some other places. And until maybe seven or eight years ago, most of my living was still writing about music. But I always liked writing about comics. I wrote a book about comics back in 2008 called Reading Comics. Uh, And then when I had the opportunity to do this book, like that was me kind of going, okay, it's been nice music writing. Now (laughs) this is what I'm doing mostly for the moment. So Yeah, now you're known as the person who writes about comic books, not the person who writes about music. (laughs) Well, I, I like writing about music too. I kind of miss yes. it. I, I, yes. do, I still do a little bit, but uh, yeah, I like well, writing about comics a lot. That's the same thing I get too. Cause I, when I was, so I live in uh, Bangor, Maine, which is the central part of Maine. Uh, I lived in Massachusetts for a number of years and I, I was a sports writer. And so I covered the Bruins and some college sports and things like that. When I moved back to Maine uh, in 2016, I left the sports writing behind and started, I, I left all media behind uh, before Adam, my buddy Adam and I started the podcast and got this going. Now I'm known as the comic book person, but I kind of do miss the sports part too. So every once in a while, I feel like I want to just, there's times where I write some stuff on just pages on my MacBook and don't ever actually publish it. I just put it on the computer and was like, okay, I got my fix. I'm good. I don't need an outlet anymore. I have that, you know, and all that stuff, but it, it's, it's, it's fun to write about comic books, but to read 27,000 plus or such, um, at what point did it mold together to the to things like just force themselves to meld together and and you lose what's going on in 27,000 comic books well i mean there's a there was a point at which it started to mostly take shape like i could see the shape of the whole thing it i thought that at some point i was going to get really burned out on it and i did not uh like maybe this is stockholm syndrome talking (laughs) but you know at a certain point there got to be something that I could like about every comic, no matter how bad it was. And sometimes because of some of the ways in which it was bad, because bad comics are always bad in ways that are very much of their historical moment. And so I would see things that would be like, oh, it's this is the particular kind of badness that we get at this point. It's somebody was asking me a while ago, like, you know, did you actually read every issue of NFL Super Pro? Like, yes, I read every issue of NFL Super Pro, and as a matter of fact, in one of the last issues of NFL Super Pro, there's a parody of the mythopoetic men's movement of the early 90s, and you're just not going to find something like that in a good comic. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, I, I don't know if I'd have the the gumption to actually read all that, because, I mean, there's times where I pick up a book, and I'll buy issue one of a series – and I'll read the first issue and say, yeah, that's the last issue I'm buying of that issue. I'm not going to read that anymore. I can't stand it. It didn't hit with me or so on. But with this uh, thing you needed to tackle with reading all these books, you really couldn't just be like, eh, I'm not going to read that because you you forced yourself to actually do that. You, you're writing a book about it. So you actually have to follow through. Uh, you can't say I read 27,000 comic books and really only read 20,000 of them and just skip over the rest of them. You actually have to right. make the commitment to do it. So yeah. I don't. I just don't think I could do it. <laughs> well, I mean, one thing that made it easier was that I did not read them in order. Yes. 
like if I would have gotten to 1993 and just lost my mind. Um, I, you know, I grazed, I read whatever I felt like on any given day. But so I had a spreadsheet and I downloaded, there, there's a spreadsheet, mikesamazingworld.com that has mm -hmm. everything Marvel has ever published, which is really useful. And I would cross things off the spreadsheet as I read them. And near the end, I realized that there was, there were like patches of the spreadsheet that I was really neglecting. And one patch in particular that was really bare. And that is how I ended up locking myself into an apartment for 11 days with 30 years worth of the Punisher. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. It, Definitely can see that. That was like, okay, um, I've got my protein bars. Yeah. I've got I've got water to drink. I'm not leaving. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, there's this. I, I bought, I mean, even recently, not recently, I would say within the past four years, I bought uh, the Punisher, the Soviet Punisher was a miniseries, yeah. six issues. Same thing. I, 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 I you mentioned in your book about being a uh, not a hoarder of the book, comic books. I forget what wording you actually use, but you collect them, but you don't actually collect them. You just accumulate them. Yeah. And and I am sometimes it's a five part or six part miniseries. I feel like if I buy issue one, that I am most likely for five months or for you know whatever number of weeks it takes for them to complete complete the series, I'm gonna buy all six issues. It, it's just gonna be like that's so what I'm a completionist. Uh, but the Soviet one, the Punisher, I just I don't think that's I think that's the only Punisher book that I've actually purchased and put into my collection. And I bought all six, but only to buy all six. I don't think I actually finished reading the series. I'm just not a big Punisher fan myself uh, as it is either. But um, <laughs> to lock yourself in an apartment and force yourself to read something i mean there could be worse things right yeah oh, i yeah. mean <laughs> absolutely could be worse things than reading comic books in an apartment with some protein bars yeah. um but you know it, it's a big undertaking to to do this but you obviously set out a goal and you and you did it you wrote in the first part of the book uh, about why you omitted some um some uh, series and some books and so on and so forth you have written other books so you have written about other things in other books um but for those people who haven't read the book and want to pick up the book how did you choose the books you chose for this specific book so how did i choose the ones that i was reading or the ones i was writing about because two different yeah. questions okay oh, yes, the ones you're right now. yes uh, go ahead uh so the ones i was reading were the ones that are set in the present day of marvel's main universe so the place where Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, and the X-Men all are as we know them. And I read all those. And there's some other stuff like the 2099 books. I read mm -hmm. all those too. Uh, I read basically all the horror comics and all the monster comics and all the romance comics. Uh, it was kind of a kludge to get me out of having to read, you know, however many hundred Conan comics <laughs> uh, and however many hundred, you know, Sergeant Fury comics and a few others. But really, like... There's a lot of stuff that Marvel has published that's like movie adaptations and adaptations of like kids animated shows, you know, Strawberry Shortcake, whatever. Um, I didn't read those uh, or I didn't feel obligated to read those. Mm -hmm. But like the rule was if the version of Peter Parker, who is who stars in The Amazing Spider-Man, could potentially show up in a comic without a time machine, without hopping universes, whether or not he actually does. But like, if he potentially could swing by at some point, I had to read it. So mm -hmm. I read all those. Uh, how I chose what I was writing about for the book, that was, that was tough. I wrote a lot more than I included. Mm -hmm. uh, I really, really needed this book to be something that would be fun to read, that you could just like pick up and read through and enjoy it, even if you weren't especially passionately interested in the comics themselves or whatever. And that meant, you know, I've gotten a certain amount of flack because there's no Daredevil chapter. No, there is no Daredevil chapter because I love Daredevil comics. There's so many Daredevil comics I like, and I don't have a really interesting thing to say about Daredevil. And what I would have said would have kind of overlapped with what I had to say about some other comic. And I'm not just going to put it in there to represent it. Um, there's no Hulk. There's no, uh, I wrote like a giant Captain America chapter that ended up getting cut. I wrote like a giant uh, Iron Man chapter that ended up, you know, this is interesting, but it's, it just, it doesn't fit. So it went out. Um, what went in there was trailheads. Like I talk about 
what I'm trying to do, like being a tour guide, being mm-hmm. somebody who has covered the whole territory. And I don't want to show you all the famous bits, and I don't want to show you necessarily my favorite bits. I want to show people the bits that can lead them toward the stuff they might like, or lead toward something interesting or an interesting way of thinking about all of these comics. So there's stuff that you would think would be in there that is not. There's stuff that you would not necessarily think would be in there that is. Like, there's a great big Master of Kung Fu chapter. And at the time I started writing it, like, I thought, you know, there is never going to be a Shang-Chi movie. There is never going to be a Shang-Chi TV show. There's never going to be a Shang-Chi video game. This is a historical. And of course, by the time I finished, it was like, oh, there's a Shang-Chi movie coming out. And now I own, I actually bought a Shang-Chi little golden book a couple months ago. I, I I love the the uh, the connection to that though, like because there's I, I talked to other writers to uh, uh, Jeremy Dauber who wrote the uh, uh, American yeah. Comics book, oh, yeah. and I I mentioned the idea of like how comic books are ever like you had to pick a stopping point, right? You you mentioned that in the book, but you had to like stop because I bought comic books on Wednesday that you could technically include in this book uh, and it's never ending. So you had to, at some point be like, okay, I'm going to stop this so I can get, write the book. Yeah. The, uh, the, nom- the nominal stopping point was Marvel legacy in 2017, yes. because that's, that's a very book Andy kind of thing. That's a like, here's, you know, here's the big break in the story. Here's what we're going on from here. And I actually went past that. Like I wrote about some stuff that came out two, three years after that. Cause I kept reading. I can't stop. I can't stop. <laughs> Which is funny how you mentioned that. Cause I was like, at some point, I remember that 2017 moment I had uh, gone to Connecticut to visit my parents and I had gone to the store and my wife's not a big fan of, uh, of uh, me listening to audiobooks in the car. So the drive to Connecticut from Maine and back, I, we were listening to something else. But when I went to the store, I was like, oh, that's an opportunity to listen to the book. So I put it on. And I remember vividly standing at an intersection and you mentioning what you did and how you did this. And uh, I remember then later on listening to a book, part of the or chapter, and hearing you say 2018 or, or later 2019. And I'm like, wait a second. Wait he said 2017. Second. He lied. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's you had to obviously pick an a ending point on it. And, and it is one of those things, if anybody is listening, the idea that you can just literally open up to like page 244 and, and read a section about Secret Invasion, Dark Rain, number one, and, and then stop. You don't have to read from chapter page one to page you know 600 you can actually just read randomly throughout the book it does make sense to me personally for you to read the entire book from beginning to end um but i think that it's set up in a way that you can like if you flip through and you go oh fantastic four number 14 and you can read about that what you have to say about that section of the book uh which is really easy for anybody who like myself i haven't been a big reader of of a hardback book i've actually been more of a comic book person my entire life It wasn't until I got older where I realized that I could actually read well. Uh, when I was younger, I had reading classes and all that stuff. So for me to be able to see this book again and just flip through it and go, oh, I want to read this again about Secret Invasion, Dark Rain. I can read that, uh, which is really cool. Um, but the way, like I said, the way it's set up is is, is great in that aspect of um, that it's not linear either. It's not you didn't start with you know back in 1963 and then finish in 2017. It jumps around. Uh, which oh, yeah. is great too. Cause uh, that same thing. I feel like there was like that seventies, eighties, nineties that I would probably have gotten a little, a little stagnant there for me uh, as a reader, uh, potentially specifically in the early nineties where I would have been like, I don't want to continue reading anymore. <laughs> I'm a big there's, Marvel there's, fan, but. There is a lot to be said for the fact that you can read this stuff in any order you mm-hmm. like. That's how comics work. You are there's this idea like, oh, no, I have to start at the beginning and read everything through. Cause, and I'm like, no, no, you don't. You have a time machine. Use your time machine. You can go anywhere in this story. The characters in it have to experience it in the order of their lives. You don't. Yes. You can jump around. You can put together the pieces. You can investigate things you think are interesting. That's a, that's a really special thing about it. And... It makes it more fun and these it's supposed to be fun like these are made for fun and pleasure and enjoyment they are not made for like exhaust exhaustive academic research like i read all these comics so you don't have to yes exactly yes and that's and that's so you we will talk a little bit about your son and your connection with that uh the but i'm reading new avengers uh brian michael bendis is run brian michael bendis oh, yeah. and like your your son you mentioned in the book is one of it's an amazing writer. I think he's one of the best writers for comic books out there. And so the new Avengers series is great. And I thought to myself, I'm a huge 
Secret Invasion fan. Like I love that that, that crossover event yeah. uh, and so on. So I thought, well, maybe I'll read it until we get to Secret Invasion or even before that when we get to Civil War and I'll pop off and read the Civil War miniseries. I stopped myself because I was like, I can read the entire New Avengers run to like whatever it is, 50 or 60 comic books, and then go back and read those miniseries and put mm -hmm. them back in there. I don't have to read them in the way that they were actually released. I can go back and read them again, mm -hmm. just like yeah. you can watch Star Wars movies in whatever order you thought is the best way to watch them, whether it's the way they were released, the way they were, you know, conically supposed to be. Um, but Brian Michael Bendis's run of New Avengers to me is, is great, great reading. And that's why I went back and decided that I would read <laughs> those ones in order. And, uh, you know, it, it's, I've stopped a little bit here because I started reading Saga again because they released the new Saga uh, books uh, our last Wednesday. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to go back to that and read a little bit more. And that's the great thing about the, the Marvel Digital thing, too, is the Unlimited, is I can read it in any specific order. And there's thousands of comic books on there as well. Uh, I do like smelling and holding physical comic books, yeah. but there is something to say about the digital aspect of it, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love, I love Marvel Unlimited. I love having easy access to all that stuff and just being able to go like huh wasn't that oh and then you know call up and 15 seconds later it's yes. in front of me yes and to, i will say they did update the app but i'm not super f a fan of the new update there is a little bit it feels, it feels hard it feels like they tried to make it easier to use but in my mind it got to navigate, harder yeah. to use yes yeah. um speaking of the going anywhere my buddy ben bishop he's a uh, comic book artist and he he's an artist right now on the last ronin uh, comic book series with Kevin Eastman over at IDW. And he has a book called The Aggregate, uh, which is a, it's a split decision comic book. It's his company. And the idea is that you start, it's almost like a choose your own adventure comic book. So like you get to a page and it says, if you want to like fight the person or not fight the person flip to the, and that is like something, uh, some 150 different ways to read that book. And that is also cool. It's kind of that idea of being able to go back and choose when you want in Time Machine is the same thing. You can pick that one graphic novel up and read it 150 times and get different, uh, you know, pages. It's pretty cool. You know, I just discovered, I think the first person to do that in comics was, believe it or not, Dan Slott in a Ren and Stimpy Show comic. Like 1993-94. See, that's knowledge I wouldn't have had in my head. I mean, it's also, I give you credit for being able to keep all that in your head as well. I mean, there's times where someone's like, what issue was so-and-so's first appearance? And I'm like, I know the answer, but I cannot give it to you off the top of my head. There's no way that I can keep that knowledge up there uh, forever. Uh, I just don't have the brain cells to do that anymore. <laughs> I'm only 35, but still, I still don't have the brain yeah, no, cells I, to do I, that anymore. I'm, I'm with you. No, I, I, I mostly use my external brain as much as I can. Like Yes. <laughs> Uh, oh, good. There's a wiki now. I don't have to remember this stuff personally. Great. Exactly. Google really quickly on what it is, just so you know what it is. Uh, but I do think it's funny um, that the the line in your book about superhero comics, that's my dad's comics. Um, yes. Because that's <laughs> it's going to be, it's probably going to be the, that situation when my son gets older, the same way um, that, you know, Motley Crue, when I said to my dad, that's my dad's music, whereas I literally just played it last night for my son in the living room because he likes to dance to it. Yeah. Um, but the same thing, the superhero comics to me, I mean, I, he was dressed up in a Spider-Man outfit, like a onesie, because I put him in it. But he's guaranteed at some point in his life, he's going to say, oh, I don't want to read comic books. That's my dad's comic books and fight me on it. But, but I, gotta, I was so happy that I loved the book. And then it got to the chapter about passing it along. And I was just so excited to read this, especially being a, a you know, a, a new dad and, and having this passion. So um, what made you put that part in the book? I know it's obviously people write, will get to read it if you do read the book. Uh, but what made you put that section in the book? It's kind of how the whole project started. I okay. mean, I got interested in the idea of what would happen if I read all of Marvel's comics, if I read this whole thing from the fact that like my then 10 year old was interested in the idea of like oh yeah what what would that look like like what um and you know it's obviously impossible but he also kind of jumped in he was trying to read a whole bunch of stuff and then discovered like what his taste was and what it wasn't and it became a thing that we did together and so i also needed something for the book so it wouldn't just be like you know here's this academic exercise like no this is personally what it means to me this is where it connects to me. And 
I'm happy to have that be like the last regular mm. chapter of the book because I, I don't want to be putting myself all over it because I mean my voice is all over it anyway. But yeah, no, there is there is an aspect of this whole project that is personal and is meaningful to me and that I care about and that's where it is. And you know, uh he and my wife and I still read a comic together pretty much every day. Um uh, we've been going through like pretty much everything Doctor Doom is in with some uh we, we, and we're doing it like like my pad podcast. I do a podcast mm -hmm. called The Voice of Latveria, which yep. is nominally a shortwave radio propaganda broadcast from the Latvian state, more actually about going through every comic that Dr. Doom has been in, in the order he experienced them, which is different from the actual chronology of the Marvel universe mm -hmm. because Doom has a time machine. Yeah. Um, and more actually really just about whatever my guests feel like talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so we've, we've been reading through those with, with some kind of digressions along the way too. We're going through journey into mystery right now, but as far as my kid is concerned, like his favorite comic right now, is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. That is his thing. Wow, it is a manga series that is absolutely wild. Absolutely not like any American comic. His kind of thing. Great. It, which is awesome because you want that. You you want to be able to you know pass along some of your interests, but you also want your 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 offspring to have their own interests. But I my my buddy owns a comic book shop down down the street from me and it, he is unbelievably surprised about how much manga has taken over his store. Uh, he has a whole section that he never thought he'd have. Uh, but he doesn't know much about it either. So he has a he's an assistant that he makes go through and make sure that it's appropriate manga too. <laughs> That's yeah. the other thing. He's like, I want I don't want to be a store known for that. Like people are coming in, like going through the curtain to try to find this black you know back room of manga. He goes, uh, is this appropriate to sell? Is this not? And the guy's like, yeah, that's great. Don't worry, put it on the shelf. Uh, but manga has grown tremendously in the United States, which is which is which is fascinating. I don't think I'd ever get into it, but I have enough to read. I mean, I, to catch up to you, I have twenty seven thousand comic books to read. I mean, I've I probably read a thousand, so we're at twenty six thousand <laughs> books to read. Fair, <laughs> but uh, it, it's it, I made my wife not made my wife. My wife likes to read. Uh, she's way faster uh, reading books than I am, and so we're reading a book together, and I'm reading it in audio book form, and she's reading it in an actual hardbound book. Uh, that I have to like make sure that she delays. Like I'm like, can you read something else tonight? Because I'm kind of behind. I don't want to be right. too far behind you. <laughs> Um, but I told her, I said, when I, you know, got the physical copy and I said, would you be interested in reading the book? And so she started reading the, she read the first chapter or two and she got into some of it. And then I said, well, I really just want you to read chapter 21, the book, the one about passing it along. And she thought it was great. And she thought it was an unbelievable part to put in there. But I, I, I realized how much I connect with your son, the love for Marvel uh, and their success at jumping back and forth. Like you can read a Thor book and see one angle and read a Captain America book and see another angle, uh, the modern crossover error. Uh, yeah. with the civil war and so on um uh, brian michael bendis obviously uh i laughed a little bit I had to share with my buddy that the fact that he wasn't such a fan of the batman when you had him try out some of the batman stuff yeah. because for me it was i'm not a huge dc fan i'm a huge marvel fan so see, laughing seeing that and reading that was like <laughs> it made me giggle a little bit that he was more of a marvel fan than a dc fan um, but at that, the biggest thing I got out of it was the fact that you guys spent time together. And I think that's one thing that I think that comic books, I think some people um, dismiss comic books as child's uh, uh, reading. And one of those things that it really is more family reading if you read the right ones and, and have the right timing together. So I really appreciated that because to me personally, it was like, this is a way that I'm going to hopefully be able to read and spend some time with my son uh, when he can read and, uh, and have that time together. So I was really appreciative of that. It made me think, about the future i don't want him to grow up too fast okay. but when he does grow up i'm excited to read comic books with him and, and and thanks to the the chapter in your book about that made me think towards the future well, that's great and uh, you know the, the one thing i would say is pay a lot of attention to like what the particular comics he likes are like uh there's some of the stuff that i really like that my kid is like mm, no 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 <laughs> no, it's name. Uh, and then there's some stuff that he's gravitated toward that uh, I would not have discovered on my own that like, oh, this is cool. 
that's awesome. That's really uh, fun, yeah. yeah. So like I said, that's the biggest thing I've had is I have some passions. Like I said, comp books is a big passion of mine. And so uh, my wife said the same thing, but like, make sure that you listen to your son and know what he wants to do growing up. You know, if I'm like, oh, I really want him to play basketball, but he wants to play baseball. Cool. Then he can play baseball. That's, I'm not going to force him to be <laughs> playing the sport that I want him to play. Um, but yeah, listening to him and, and trying to figure out which books he wants to read. And hopefully at one point, and I bought him some of those, they make some um, like the cardboard uh, hard books that are like Groot stay at the gym or whatever it may be. Yeah. And so <laughs> it will be this slow uh, child. Here's you're always going to see Marvel in front of you at some point in your life. Uh, and, and with the movies, it does wonders too, because it'll be experiences he'll be able to have with movies and TV shows uh, to connect back to the Marvel world as well. Um, but I think that, you know, when you create the reading order with your son and trying to figure that out and your love and in, in, in creating the actual reading order is probably what I'm going to love too. I'm going to probably have spreadsheets and things as well. If he does get into reading comic books, because you had written in your book about how you like creating the reading order for him as well. <laughs> Yeah, and he liked that part. Like that was <laughs> like he he's very very into things that can be done in a particular sequence, and figuring out what the optimal sequence like that that is that's something that that makes him really happy to do. So there was a way to kind of skew this to be to be like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I mean, you have this book. Uh, you you it's been out. Uh, what it came out at the end of twenty twenty one? Is that true? Uh, it's the fall twenty twenty one. October twelfth. Yeah, so. I just time is, gone into its, uh, time is so weird right its, now it's gone into its fourth printing now so okay. i'm real happy about that i don't even know what copy i got but um the you can find it uh you know, on amazon all the different places but douglaswoke.com and penguin random house you can get it too but so now you finish this now it's out do you already have in your mind what's next or is this something that comes up are you already working on what's next not that you need to share which uh, next, but how does this work uh, in douglas's world how does this work at the moment i'm still like I'm spending most of my time promoting this book. Okay. Um, I have, you know, I've been doing some little writing gigs here and there, like magazine things. Okay. Um, doing a lot of, I, I did a book tour in November, which was a lot of fun. Like just driving around with a friend of mine uh, in, uh, around California, basically, mm -hmm. like uh, with a little bit of Nevada. And then in terms of like next big project, there are a couple of vague possibilities. Um, a lot of people are like you can do one for DC now. No, I am not going to do one for DC now. I, <laughs> like, I, I feel like that would be harder. I, not, you, I, but, yeah. I don't like to diss DC because I am. A, I don't have a problem with DC. Like, I just I was never a really DC got a kid. Thing. Yes, like I, uh, but also like there's not a way to think of it as one big narrative in the way mm. that you can do that with Marvel, uh, which is why I did Marvel for this. Mm -hmm. um, there are some other odd bodies of comics work that I might want to do something with. Um, and then there's a couple of book ideas I have that have little or nothing to do with comics. And I might do something like that just so I'm not the comics only person for the rest of my life. We'll see. Yes. Um, I mean, yeah, that, it gives you the ability to do when your book's in the fourth printing. Now you can focus on some other things as well and not have to worry about it as much, but you're promoting it. And yes, exactly. And I, I'm good friends with the guys over at Friends and Work. So I did hear you, oh, uh, cool. your Friends and Work podcast too. So uh, they were on the podcast, I don't know, beginning of 2021 chatting about their stuff. But their rewatch order for the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been amazing. My wife has been really fun watching oh. that stuff too. So listening to you on their podcast, which I always love to give them a little shout out at Friends from Work uh, because they're great dudes over there too. Uh, Kyle and Robbie are great dudes. But um I, I was so excited that you were able to come on and talk about uh, all of the Marvels. You can get it at Amazon.com. Like I said, DouglasWoke.com. But Penguin Random House, I believe, also has all the links on where you can buy them yeah, as I mean, well. So It's wherever books are sold. And I'll recommend... give a shout out to our local shop. If you're in the Bangor, Maine area, yes. Friar Patch in downtown Bangor, Maine has the book for sale uh, in a local independent comic book shop. So grab that there too because Fantastic. they yeah. need your help too uh, as well. But again, I listened to an audiobook, and if you liked Douglas's voice today, you can listen to him read the book to you, soothing <laughs> tones of Douglas Woke on on uh, Audible as well. <laughs> it was interesting. It, it's it, I feel like I definitely get um, this. Like I've read a lot of the different books about like Slugfest, uh, a couple of books about Marvel versus DC and things like that. And I feel like that stuff is the stuff I can listen to in a in a in a car 
uh, a little less the, your your uh, you know fiction uh, books where it's you have to pay attention to what characters are doing and what they're doing when. Right. Uh, this is something that can listen to almost like a podcast uh, where it's just you nice. you're 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 downloading information into my head. And, and, and listening. So I pull into work sometimes and I'm just like, you can hear it blasting in my car. And my friend's like, what are you listening to? I'm like, don't worry about it. It's something Marvel related. You know that. Nice. <laughs> um, but yeah. And then you can follow uh, Douglas on uh, Twitter too, at Douglas Wolf. Anything else you wanted to promote or, or, or say or in like that before we wrap this up? I don't think so. Uh, actually, you know what? I can brag about something that happened. I'm very excited about. Yes. Which is the issue of Defenders that came out a week and a half ago. Okay. I was really happy about this. On the last page, uh, there is an image of Doctor Strange at home, putting his feet up. He's in his library. And one of the books on his bookshelf is my book. That is amazing. Yeah. That is unbelievable. So I'll, that's, uh, that's, see, now you've made it. You've been published in these things. This is and now I exist in the universe. Like that's, that's the exactly. <laughs> now you're, you're, you're in the uh, Marvel universe. That's yeah. See, you got to get it. All the marbles. And there's a, is a, is a, it's called a journey to the end of the biggest story ever told, but I feel like that's a long title to put out there. So all of the marvels is the name of the book to me. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, this, the subtitle is a little joke. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, uh, it's a journey to the ends of the biggest story ever told. So one of my huge influences as a, as a critic is a guy named Carl Wilson. Carl Wilson wrote a book a few years ago called Let's Talk About Love. Uh, it is a book about the Celine Dion album, Let's Talk About Love. Uh, and like that's the one that has my heart will go on on it. Yeah. Uh, and the premise of this book is millions of people love this album. I hate this album. What do millions of people know that I don't? Uh, and its subtitle is A Journey to the End of Taste. And it is an inquiry into taste. And that itself is a joke because Celine Dion, there is a French writer named Louis Ferdinand Celine who wrote a book called A Journey to the End of the Night. So yeah, yeah. there's that Celine connection there. So this is me tipping my hat to Carl Wilson for his book. Speaking of that random thing, my wife and I are thinking about taking a trip to DC this summer and we're looking at the different monuments and things. There's a Titanic monument in Washington, DC. And it's literally just the uh, arm stretched wide out at the beginning of the front of the boat uh, right. from, uh, from, from Titanic that I thought was very fascinating that there's a random memorial in huh. Washington, DC for the Titanic. So my heart will go on. Uh, I'll have to be played during that as well. So uh, but yeah, that was really fun. I love talking Marvel comics and I love talking about it in this format as well, because uh, sometimes we just nerd out over specific, you know, movies or actual comic books, but the generic idea of 27,000 plus comic books read to get to the point where you make a book. Uh, and it's not that long. I mean, come on, people, those people who aren't very fan big fans of actually reading books, this is not a very long book to read either or hard book to read. So I I'm sure you're in agreement of that. <laughs> <laughs> take your word for it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, thanks for coming on douglas uh, and again follow him on at douglas woke on twitter and you can get him at douglaswoke.com penguin random house amazon local shops you can find all of his books and i did order reading comics to read it because i wanted to read mm -hmm. reading comics as well and i ordered it used from a person who and they canceled my order because oh. they were out of stock on it so i have to pick <laughs> that up as well and read that because you know it's award-winning right you're award-winning because of it yeah I suppose so. <laughs> Thank you so much, Justin. This is a nope. blast. No problem. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon at some point, hopefully. Maybe the next book we'll have you on and to promote. Uh, but thanks for joining us, Douglas. Thank you so much. <laughs>